The first people to live in Ireland arrived in the century shortly after 8000 BC. And often as archaeologists we deal with um, an excavated site. What we often forget is that that building itself required lots of different materials coming together in order to construct it. So not just the, the timber that formed the post, but the axe which was used to chop down the trees. This is definitely a project that requires a group of people and I think the more we went into it, the more that became evident. There's no way you could manage to put something together so big um, by yourself, but in terms of going out and getting stuff, one person can go get this, the stones from whatever location you might need to bring together the wood, maybe up in Dublin. Um, so having a group of people work together uh, on this project was, I think, the heart of it. You wouldn't have been able to manage it by yourself, certainly. I suppose one of the most basic things is tools and a long process in terms of going out, getting the right materials um, from different locations um, and bringing them together to one place. It's not as easy as just kind of going somewhere and buying something. You know, modern society today, we maybe have a bit more of a disposable attitude. We can walk into a shop, we can walk into a hardware, we can buy axes, whatever we need. Well, what you don't realise when you read when you read something in a book is is the physical side to it. How much effort it actually takes to cut down a tree with a with a stone axe and to to carry it a kilometre from where we cut it to the centre. That was very interesting to, to realise. And what kind of manpower you need to carry enough equipment to build a house. Now, I was actually surprised how well they were, and the whole process itself was astonishing because you got to see through their eyes how material worked. Even just looking now at them loosening up the sod like, and the techniques involved in using that, you know, you, you wouldn't really think of using a stick to lift up turf. <laughs> you know, it's amazing what they were able to do. What we often forget is that that building itself required lots of different materials coming together in order to construct it. So not just the, the timber that formed the post, but plant materials which were transformed into the string which tied the timber together. I just thought it was in, like incredible just seeing because it's based off the plans of Mount Sandal, it's a site that I would have seen in lectures and like I was involved in actually raising like supporting poles and when it first goes up you just look at it and you just think it's so much bigger than you think because you look at a site plan and then actually it comes up to a structure, you just realise like just the scale of it. The conversations, the debates, the kind of trying to determine what this structure should look like, how it should be done, what materials should be used. Um, like we're working from a ground plan, so it's difficult then to try and build above that. Just the various kind of conversations that we had, trying out different things and kind of playing around with different ideas and materials to see what would work, what wouldn't work. And then as well, I mean, just the fact that it was a kind of a huge car group of people, always kind of coming and going and involved throughout the whole thing. And there was days when we'd sit around making rope, just talking nonsense all day. And there was other days where we'd be very kind of head down into work, but everyone on the team, I mean, they're, they're really, uh, really kind of devoted, very, 
very good at work and uh, and get along really well. So I mean, yeah, it was kind of a big, big kind of community spirit on the project. I think it has already challenged some people's ideas about what this period of early prehistory was like. So I think that, hopefully, that increased awareness of a long period of Irish prehistory will, will promote interest and promote the study of that period. <laughs>